Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will show you everything you need to know to build your first Squarespace website. Now I'll show you all of the tools, where to find them and how to use them so that you can effectively build your first website with Squarespace. Now, this is a tutorial for beginners, so we'll be step-by-step -step showing you everything along the way. If you have questions about what I'm going to cover, I don't wanna waste time now talking about that. Instead, go down to the description, I'll list out an outline of what this video is going to cover. So check it out down there if you need to. So starting off with some background, Squarespace is actually very user friendly and is a website builder that is pretty much all inclusive. They kind of eliminate all of the coding and they make everything drag and drop, just click on menus. It's really easy, very graphic user interface style. So you don't have to worry about knowing how to use HTML or how to add your domain and transfer stuff. It's all very easy and they walk you through everything you need to whenever there's anything a little bit more advanced it really kind of walks you through it and you almost never have to hire developers or do any kind of coding on your own. So with that in mind, this is a great platform if you're trying to start a blog or an e-commerce store, if you're trying to sell online courses, if it's a personal website for a resume, or maybe if you are a photographer, there's endless options for why you would want to start a Squarespace website. But whatever your reason is, I will try to cover as much as possible in this video. So without wasting any more time, let's go over to my laptop right now and get started with this website. Okay, so step one, very simple. Go down in the description of this video. At the very top, I'll have a link there. So copy and paste that link into a new tab on your browser so you can follow along with what we're doing here. Now, once you go to that link, it'll look something like this. Of course, Squarespace is always changing what their website looks like. Sometimes there's pictures of whatever in the background, but for no matter what the orientation is, at the top right, you should see something that says login. So go to login, either login or create an account, depending on if you have one yet, obviously, and come back to this page then. Once you have your account, once you're signed in, you'll go up and click on get started. Now get started, I will say disclaimer right here, it depends for some reason, it does look different on different browsers or different accounts for some reason, and I'm really not sure why. So for me and for most of my accounts, it does look like this, but I found right here in a different account, it looks totally different like this. So the, the, the premise is going to be the same. You're going to be choosing a template. It's just a little bit different as to how you will find the template. So right here, you'll see that there's, you know, on the side of this layout, which I don't, I think this is the less common layout. Uh, they have, you know, you can say you're a local business and then from there, they'll have a bunch of different kind of themes that you can choose from or templates you can choose from. Now, from what I think is probably the more common one, at the top, they have a little bar where you can type in uh, what the premise of your business is. So I could say like sell stuff and it does an okay job of recommending things. So it only recommends like a, a few. So it, it's right, these are stores. But what I have better luck with is actually looking at the categories on the left and choosing based on that. And admittedly, there is some overlap with some of these. So like portfolios and photography, like there's kind of some overlap, maybe check those out, see uh, which one's actually best. And honestly, it doesn't really matter that much which one you choose. It will save you a lot of work if you choose a good one that is very similar to what you actually want. But I'll show you how you can add and remove pages later on and add pictures and really just make it whatever you want. So it doesn't matter that much with what you choose up front. But let's go down here and say that we are looking to start maybe an online store. I think a lot of people might be looking to start an online store, sell some kind of services or something. And so from here, there's a bunch of different options. Scroll down, find some templates. And let's just say that we like this one right here. We like the colors of it. We like the way it's oriented right there. And so you can go and preview it because looking at that little tiny thing might not be enough. So when you go to preview, you can either go to the full demo site or you can just look right here with a tiny window and see basically what it would look like. So you see, yeah, it looks okay for us right now. Let's see what it looks like in tablet mode. So in tablet mode, it looks okay. When we go to mobile mode, this is a really important one and I'll, it's gonna be a recurring theme in this video, guys. Mobile is extremely important. I think it's something like 60% of online browsing is done on mobile now. So really important that you focus on this and we're gonna come back to this later in the video. So let's go and start with this design. This one looks okay for now. And this will bring us into the actual website builder. And I'm gonna give you guys a basic tour first of all, of what we're working with here, and then we'll dive into some of the details. So right off the bat, it says, welcome to Squarespace, and that's it. So we're just gonna say start, 
and admittedly, the other editor might look a little bit different. So if we go back over to this one right here and we choose a website, so if we go down to online store there and we choose, I think, Pickle Perfection or whatever, um, so if we wanna do this one, it acts a little bit different. And I'm telling you this because I don't want people to go down in the comments and be confused and say, it looked different for me for some reason, because I'm telling you right now, it might look a little bit different, but the tools should be the same. And I'll show you that later on in the video. But you'll see right here, if you're on the other layout, it asks you questions, it asks you to name your site right away. Um, so if we're just going to skip this, it'll come back to essentially the same thing. So you see between the two, you still have this right here where you have your page, design, commerce, marketing, stuff like that is all right here. But in what I think is the newer layout, I'm not actually sure which one's newer, um, this layout right here also has your pages up top. So I'll get into this in a second, guys, but essentially, it, it, first of all, it keeps prompting to upgrade to premium, and we'll talk about that later as well. But for each one, they, they have a lot of different things that you can kind of optimize in here, but I'm just gonna stick with this layout for now, this one right here, and I'll try to keep it as universal as possible between the two different formats. So what you see right here is these are really what you're gonna be using the most. And I'll go through each one individually, but these are how you kind of optimize the general structure of your website, how you can do things like set up domains, set up the names, the color schemes, the font schemes, all kinds of stuff like that can be done over here. Now on the right side, this giant most of the window right here is basically going to be your editor where you can move things around, change pictures, change the actual text and stuff like that. So starting off right here, let's click on site title at the top and edit that. And the way this really works is whenever you want to change things, you kind of hover over it. They pop up with some little gray boxes in the corners and you'll be clicking on edit. So right here, site title, click on edit for that. And you can go over here and edit your site title. So let's just say it's going to be uh, Santrell, Santrell um, canned goods, I don't know. It looks like we have a lot of canned goods pictures. I don't actually have any pictures for this website yet because it's a fictitious website. So we're gonna say canned goods. Um, and you can have a tagline here. It'll show up maybe throughout the website because this right here, you can also access from somewhere else. So like I said, you can go up and edit the title right there. Or what you can do is if we go back, if we go back, you'll see that from home right here, you can actually go down to design and then from design, you can go to logo and title and you see it brings you to the same thing. So making your header right here, naming your website, you can put a logo in. So upload your logo uh, and some websites might be having that shown in different places. And then down here, your little favicon or your browser icon is going to essentially be what's up there on the top. So what you see right there, that's just the Squarespace one right now. But if we go to like, let's say amazon.com, so amazon.com. Uh, I don't know why there's an underscore there. If you go to Amazon, you'll see that they have the little A right up there, a little Amazon logo. Now, if you're looking to make a browser icon or for that matter, even a logo or any graphics on a website, a tool that I use a lot, a free tool out there is canva.com. Canva.com lets you, uh, first of all, this is not sponsored by them. I'm just telling you guys for, this is what I use. Um, so canva.com is a great way to make different, you know, logos and images and graphics that you can use on your website. They have a lot of good templates. So if you're trying to make like a YouTube banner or a Facebook profile picture, they have the right dimensions for pretty much everything. And the reason I bring this up is because your logo, you probably want it to be a certain aspect ratio, probably square. And you want your little browser icon to be something around like 30 by 30 pixels, so pretty small. And so you might wanna have, maybe there's a template on canva.com for that, right? So that's what I wanted to show you right there, but getting back into the general tour of the, the big block on the right. So let's go home on the top left right there. So from here, you can go down and you see that this has basically like a little block design. And so for each one, like I said, when you hover over it, this one is your little about section. So you can go and edit this, you can go to settings for this. And so if we just go to edit right now, it'll kind of bring up this little editor mode where we can change the text for this right here, like pickle perfection, maybe let's say uh, Santrell. Okay, oops, that was a, we changed the font there accidentally. So let's go and call this one Santrell, Santrell pickles. We're gonna call it Santrell pickles, I guess. I don't know, that's what we're selling right now. So Santrell Pickles, so let's highlight this and change the font. And as you can see right there, guys, it's pretty clear that across the top, you have a pretty standard text editing, uh, just tools right there. You can change like left adjustment, right adjustment. You can make things into links, and that's a very important theme on a website. 
You can add quotes and change like a lot of basic stuff, copy and paste things, change the font. But let's just say over here, if we really want this right here, say it's like a, we have a whole blog about this or something. What you want to do is you want to highlight that, click on the little link button right there, and you want to add a link to wherever that's going to go. So within our website, we don't have a domain yet, but you want to be adding links. So you want to add links to maybe it's like santrell.com slash blog or santrellmedia.com slash blog slash brine you know so like you're gonna have specific domains for each blog post you have each page you have and having links in the text is a great way to not only have it easier for people to navigate but this will also help you rank higher on google and search engines will be more capable of kind of integrating what your website is and just reading it better with their crawlers so once you add the text right there and you add the text here, you change the font, you can do whatever you want. The next thing is you can click and drag this around however you want. So let's click and drag it right there. Um, and so there is definitely some general spacing to these. Uh, so you can change like the shape of them and the dimensions of them. So you can say that we want this to be a different format. And really, the so not to skip steps there, if you click on the little plus button right here to add a block, you have some other options. So you can add things like a text, you can add markdown, which is a little bit more advanced. Um, you can add quotes, you can add images, videos, spacers, like literally just a spacer. If you want something to be farther away, you want a gap between things, add a spacer. Um, so you guys, I obviously recommend scroll through this and check these out on your own when you're building your website, but there are a lot of different options. So let's add a button right now. So the button we can add wherever we want in here. So let's go add a button and click and drag that to somewhere like right there. Now, something like a button is some is a very powerful tool that is basically a linked box, a linked image really is what it is. So you're gonna have some text on there. So let's just say, learn more, sure that makes sense. And then you're gonna have uh, a click through URL and this is going to either go to a web address, like I said before, when you have a specific URL within your website, or it can actually link to a page, you can link to an email, a phone, or a file. So a lot of things you can do right here. Pages, you can go and search for whatever pages you have right there. You can have things open or not open in a new window. So typically what I do is I just have my URL here. So it'll be like santrellmedia.com slash blog slash pickles. And maybe that's something that people would definitely want in a new tab, right? So let's just do that for now. And then you can go and say apply. And then once you're done setting this little block up, and once you did, you know, we added everything, did everything you wanted, uh, you can go up there and click save. Now, something else I didn't mention is if you click on the little bubble icon to the top left of things. So if we want to change like this, for example, you can go and actually click right there and go and say we want to add something above it. So it's really easy to add on borders of things um, and have like a markdown thing up there. Maybe if like next to this one or let's say above this, we want to add uh, maybe like a picture. You can go and add an image and it'll plop an image right in that space. So it's not always drag and drop. Like it, there is ways to have things just pop up in gaps that you want and it kind of moves everything around accordingly. So once we have this wonderful layout already done, let's go and click save. And once you save it, it brings you back to the editor again. So that's essentially how you're going to be uh, filling in the actual content of your website. Now going down, let's say we have a different block. Let's say we have something like this, a little gallery block right there. And so, or gallery section rather. So then we can go and edit this. So you can go and add images or videos. You can go into actual just editor, which again, kind of allows you to go through here. Let's, let's use this page, yeah. Um, so you can go and add more images. There's settings for this. You can add more parts of this. So you can add uh, more videos in there. You can add more images, like I said, and you can rearrange them, of course, if you don't like where they are. So we can put this one over here um, and stuff like that. So pretty straightforward, guys. This one is not really that. So we can have image focal point. You can actually move around as well. Um, let's go back to pages now. Now for each one, you might notice there's also other options such as settings right there and settings you can also access from other places in here as well. But so for now, if we just click on settings right in the in the options right there, uh, it gives you kind of five options on the left. So you can go to general, which is going to be changing the name of it. Uh, it's going to be, I don't know why I just decided to reload right there, but you can change like the title, you can change the URL. So if you have a specific URL, like I said before, where it's like santrellmedia.com slash blog slash pickle article or something, you know, whatever you're talking about, you can add that right there. 
You can enable or disable the page. You can add a description. I do recommend adding descriptions. You can duplicate the page or you can delete it. Then if you go down to SEO right there, so SEO is something that, so backing it up a little bit, SEO stands for search engine optimization, which essentially means that your website is more visible to search engines because most people find websites from search engines such as Google. And so if they type in something on Google, they're looking for a pickle store online, then we want our website to be as easy as possible for Google to find so that they can recommend it to people when they're searching for us. So for that reason, you do have to go down here and this is a little bit more advanced. Once you have your website kind of set up already, go through this and start adding like your title, your description um, and stuff like that. I really don't recommend hiding pages from search results for most people. Um, but for the most for this, like this is pretty self-explanatory. Type this in eventually. You have social image there, media, and you do have advanced stuff down here. So I'm not going to get into that right now. You can add some advanced code. Um, because honestly, there is coding that like you can get into some really advanced things with websites, but for something like Squarespace, they really don't show the coding. So if you ever want to have any kind of code involved, this is really where you would end up doing most of it, at least. So getting over to the left, I know I said that the right is where you kind of do all the modifications to the general, like the content that you actually have on there. But looking at the left, then you have some interesting things here. So at the very top, we saw that we have home shop and blog. And so because this is a store, we have a couple things right there, like inventory, customers, discounts, orders. But I'm going to talk about these next few for a little bit right here. So if we click on pages, it brings us into a big kind of page tree to show us the pages we have. So we have home, we have shop and we have blog. So starting off with the primary navigation at the top, this is going to be, like I said, you have the different pages right here. And within the first page right here, you have a lot of different sections. Now, if we want to go and add a new page, what we do is we click the plus button right there to create a new page. And from here, you have so many different options where you can go and add a blank one, you can add an about page, different things like that. And you have a lot of different options for general collections, you can go and add uh, like an index is the one we're looking at right here, where you have multiple sections. See the little icon right there? This one's an index. This one's a little bit of a store. This one's an, a blog. And so if you have an index, you can add a lot of different sections in there to have something kind of more like this right here. So for this one, we are just going to actually not use this, but sure, let's call it new index. If you don't like it, you click the little trash can icon to delete that. So let's confirm and delete that right now. So then getting down to the home one right here. So home has a lot of different things where you can say like, hey, maybe we don't want them in this order. Maybe we want ingredients uh, above. Maybe we want about way down at the bottom. Maybe we want like the founder portraits, I don't know, in the middle. You can move things around and you'll see that a lot of this stuff will get moved around in the website then uh, when you start to look at it. So if we go and move ingredients up above the welcome, you'll see that it kind of it rearranges the sections right there. So really easy way to do that if you don't like where the sections are. Um, and so you can also go up to the top right there and manage sections, another way of doing this. And this is a little bit more of a visual way of doing that where you can say like, hey, I want this higher, I want this lower. And I do like moving these around sometimes in this format, just because it is easier to see, you can add sections, you can remove them. And when you're looking at the grand scheme of the colors of this, it is useful to do it this way sometimes. Okay, so within the home page right here, you can go and add some more sections from the bottom right there. So if we click on add section, like I said before, you have some different layouts for how the sections will be. You can have a blank one, you can have about contact, like there's a lot of different suggestions right there for layouts. And so maybe we want one that's just about booking or something. So we can go and choose what the booking looks like, description or no description, and it'll kind of bring you down to that right away and show you what it should look like. So if we go down to, it's called new page right now. Um, so book an appointment. And of course you can change a lot about this. So if we go to the little settings icon right there, again, you can change the page title and call this whatever we want, change the navigation title to whatever we want. Um, and then we can go and save that. So now just to loop back around and show you some of the things I talked about before, if you go down to one of the sections like a gallery right here and you click the little arrow to go over, it brings you into the gallery editor. Now this is what I showed you like a minute ago, like, like I said, where some tabs, like some sections like this one, you can go in and edit and change the text within that right there. Other sections that are like a gallery, you can't really go and edit and click and drag. You'll go over to the editor on the left side here 
where you see the ingredients gallery because this ingredients is what it's called and you can change things right there and so like i said click and drag these around add different sections edit different sections so if we go down to the next page called shop right here you'll see that from shop you can see it looks like this obviously they have like canned lemons or whatever i, I, don't, I don't really know these aren't my pictures these are not my products but if we want to change any one of them, we can just go and double click on it and it'll bring up the options right here where we can go and add images for our products. We can add the price. If it's a subscription product, we can select that. We can go and name the product um, and you can like duplicate it if you have a lot of similar products or you know similar in any way similar. Then we can go over to pricing and variations. So if you have different SKUs for different sizes, different colors, whatever it is, you can have different images for that additional information we can have so you can just write stuff about it that you know for whatever you want longer descriptions we can have a form right here no form required let's say because it is just a regular can of whatever uh, you can add a custom but custom add button label um, featured product you can add a product url so typically i'll just make this whatever the product is so i guess this is like uh, Benny Shoga, whatever, 93 something, whatever. So make your URL that so you, people can find this product if they're looking for it. Then go to SEO. And again, SEO is something that you want to make sure your website is optimized for a search engine to find you. That's obviously what SEO stands for. And so a page like this, your product, if people are looking for this product, you want Google to be able to find it and refer your product to potential customers. Then we go over, we have social. I, I don't really think that things really get shared on social as much anymore, but if somebody shared this on Facebook, that's what it would look like. And you can kind of change the way that is, change the image or whatever. Uh, and then you can go and share that right here. So we are not going to do that right now. But once you're done, you can go down to the bottom and say save. And that is your item right there. Now, if you want to change the way the items look in this sale or in this, um, this shop page right here, you can click and drag them around very easily. It's something that's really nice about a website builder like Squarespace where you can have your shop and just everything is so easy to click and drag and just move things to wherever you want. Now, besides that, let's go back to the other one I wanted to show you at the bottom blog. Now blog again is a slightly different setup here. Let's go to copy page. And once you start using this, I promise guys, it might look complicated at first, but you really start to get used to it. It's really not a difficult interface to use. And most of what you're looking for is pretty self-explanatory. There's kind of a couple ways to get to a lot of the stuff you're trying to do. And it generally works through itself. So if you wanted to like edit this one, you can go and edit right there, or you can go over to the side and click edit from right there. So lots of ways you can do this. If you have different blogs right here, you can have different drafts that maybe you didn't put them out yet, but you're writing a blog. You can have uh, some other things right there, scheduled blogs. So if you want to create a new post, then what you do is at the top, click on the plus icon right there and start creating your post. And so you can type a lot of things you can add. It's kind of the same layout here as you saw in the other kind of builder that we had before, where you can click and add things. Like if we want to add something below, maybe we have an image, maybe we have a card on the side um, and you have just lots of options where you can have like an image, you can have text, you can, so many options here. Just experiment with this and get used to it. See what it kind of looks like and feels like. And you're going to start to make your website look a little better, just like one piece of information at a time. And going across the top, we have options. Again, you can have the post URL, which is what I said. I've been talking about this for a while. If you have blogs, which I recommend blog posts are usually a good way to rank higher on Google. Um, you want to have, you know, links to this on your on your website. And you also want to have it to be an easy and digestible uh, URL there. So it's going to be just a URL slug. It's going to be added to the end of your domain. So for me, santrelmedia.com slash blog slash and then whatever the title is for this one. Maybe this is like beat season as we see over on the right. Um, and it's, you can say who the author is. You can have a source URL. You can have, you know, you can add a lot of stuff in there. SEO, again, fill that out. So you have a title there, social, share, and location. Um, that's all gonna be pretty straightforward. So let's go and save this one as a draft right now. You could say it needs review, you can schedule it, or you can just go ahead and publish it. You also have comments. Maybe you want comments on or off. You could choose that. A nice feature to have on here. So let's say, okay. And then we can add tags, we can add categories. And again, that's gonna make things easier for people to find on your website. And that's ultimately what it comes down to. You want to make good quality content and you want to make it easy to find. 
So then we can go down here and you have all these different ones. You can delete them, you can edit them. And it like you can see right here, it looks pretty good. When you go to each individual blog, it looks like a regular blog to me. At the bottom, you have you know comments. You can have different things like the title right there, a big picture at the top, and just get creative with this and you know start experimenting with this and seeing how you can actually make your blogs look better. So going back, guys, that so far we really only got through uh, just the pages right here. So if we go back again, it'll bring you back to the home, what we talked about in the very beginning, and we have after pages, we have design. Now, design is kind of the mass structure of your website. You can really change things um, that are gonna apply across your website. So like I showed you originally, logo and title, I said that maybe 15 minutes ago, you can change the logo and the title and uh, the tagline of your website. You can go down and change a uh, social sharing logo if you have that. And of course you can have your browser icon as well. So I, I recommend adding all of those. So you're covered on all your bases there. Then you can go and change the template. If you don't like this one for some reason, you can go and, 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 and change the template or install a new template on your website. I usually recommend doing that as early as possible to limit the rework that you have to do. Then you can go down to site styles right there. Site styles is uh, going to kind of just change a couple things like the border you have. Um, you have some more technical, a little bit more advanced stuff um, like the, the loading we have right there, the header layout. Um, and so a lot of stuff like that if you want to change the color of like different areas, different blocks, um, you can do a lot of that from within design right here. Now let's go back to the next one down here. You have lock screen, you have checkout page, uh, error like 404 page not found, uh, stuff like that. So if you want to have like a checkout page or something, I recommend you optimize. Maybe if you have ever, you make sure you don't have broken links, but if you do, you want to make sure that this looks good anyway. So you could say like, sorry, you, I don't know what happened there. We have a broken link and just kind of refer people back to the home page. So you can, you know, change this and, and edit it and see how it looks right there. Um, but we're not going to do that right now for this website. But it is something I recommend doing. Hey guys, so admittedly, when I was originally recording, I did forget one or two really important things that I want to show you right now. So yes, I know this is not the pickle website we were making. Instead, I just opened up a new random template. It doesn't actually matter because this is something that is part of the Squarespace editor, not really specific to any single website template. But what you'll see here is on the big main block. So on the right side here where we have all of our editor, the top right corner of that, you have two buttons right there. So one of them is a full screen mode, which is a great way to look at your website in full screen and kind of get the experience of what somebody would see if they were on your website. And something I recommend, first of all, is try connecting your laptop if you're working on a laptop, connect it to a TV, connect it to a projector if you can, maybe an old monitor, a different monitor, because some different TVs or monitors have different aspect ratios and your website might look different on those than it would on your website on, on your on your laptop for example. So what I like to do is I have an old like almost square, it's like a four by three monitor. Um, it's like a really old one at my house and I plug it in whenever I'm making a website just to make sure things aren't cropped in an unusual way and to make sure it still looks good. So that's one piece of advice right there. Another piece of advice kind of with the same theme is right next to that you have the mobile preview. And like I said in the beginning of this video, this is unbelievably important. More and more traffic is moving to mobile. Something right now for me, it's like 60% of my traffic comes from mobile devices. So people are, you know, people are using their phones more than their laptops when they're going on the internet. And you wanna make sure that you are optimized for that, you are ready for that, and your website is prepared for whenever people visit on mobile. So you wanna make sure that you're going in here, checking it out, making sure the text looks good, the format looks good, things aren't cropped in an unusual way, um, and you can edit things within here and make sure it looks uh, as good as possible, right? So those are two important things right there. A third thing I wanna show you guys that I also didn't mention is on the bottom right, they have a little question mark right there. Uh, it's your assistant is what they call it. I recommend when you're making a website, just kind of an easy little checklist there, go on down and look at these and make sure that, I mean, I covered most of this in the video, but if you're, you know, when you're working on your website, just a little reminder down there, you can go and it'll kind of help you through things and say, oh, oh maybe you want to change your font and your colors. Maybe you want to include your site title or your logo. And you know, of course I showed you that in this video, but while you're working on your website, sometimes go down and check out that assistant there uh, just to be a little bit 
you know, a little bit more reminded of what you should be doing. And on top of that, you can contact them and go to the help center if you have problems. And they've been pretty responsive for me. I've heard a lot of people say the same thing. They have a pretty good help team there. Okay, so that's everything I forgot to show you guys in the original recording session that I realized once I was editing. But now let's get back into the original video. Now going back again to here to the home page. So we went through pages, we went through design. The next one is commerce, which this is an online store. So this is relevant for us. And like I said before, guys, there are different layouts of this editor. It's generally going to be the same tools everywhere. But like I said, if we look at like this one right here, it does look a little bit different. Back to home again, we looked at pages, we looked at design. The next one is commerce. This doesn't apply to everybody, but because this is an online store, this obviously applies here. And this is basic stuff like your order, your inventory, uh, your discounts. You can have like inventory, like reminders when you're low on inventory. Um, you can have payments, checkout, like you can set up a lot of stuff here. I'm not gonna dive into this too much because I know not everybody is setting up an e-commerce store. Not everybody's selling things on their website. So look through this on your own. It's really not that complicated though. A lot of it's gonna be like set up payments and you click on that and it'll walk you through it. Like what payments do you want? and stuff like that. So let's go back and go back again. And from here, the next one is marketing. Now this one is actually a little bit more interesting because again, you can kind of work through some SEO stuff. And what I think is more exciting is promotional pop-ups. So if you've been on a website when you have like something pop up just like this right here, and they're like, hey, do you wanna make your website better? And if you do, maybe sign up for this free PDF or something, right? And it's a good way to kind of capture emails or encourage some kind of action on your website. So I do recommend having a display pop-up um, for most websites, maybe not for everybody, but it's a great call to action that somebody has to physically go and click the X to get out of that. And you're, you're, you're calling them to do some kind of action. If it's sign up for an email, if it's, you know, look at a new discount or something, whatever it is, it's going to be right there. So let's go and uh, let's go back to, we're not going to actually add that. So let's undo that. It wants me to go through and connect that. Then we have an announcement bar there. We have promotion for Instagram. Um, we've got share buttons and stuff like that. And so marketing does have some very powerful tools when you're trying to obviously do any kind of marketing stuff and really call to action and get people to share and engage with your website a, a little bit more than they otherwise might. Now, I'm not going to get too much into the rest of the options, but we do have scheduling right there, which is kind of a, a service that Squarespace has where they can kind of set up like meetings and stuff for you if you're interested in that kind of scheduling stuff. We have analytics here, which analytics will get into your sales and your traffic. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory. There's not much you have to do here when you're setting your website up, but eventually you have more data collected and you can learn a lot from here and really kind of optimize your site and your products and make business decisions based on the information that you're able to collect with Squarespace here. Then we also have comments down there and settings. Now, all of that is, you know, obviously you have a lot of different settings here, but settings is probably the next thing we wanna look at and really get into this. So you have site visibility. Now, this is if your site is published or not. So you can publish your site, of course, unlike some other things like Wix, where you can publish a site for free or Weebly or all the other ones out there, Squarespace, you will have to pay for this. So we can go and have it password protected. So anyone who has the password can see this. Um, or we can go and upgrade so we can publish. Now, let's go and save this first. So let's save our changes and we are going to select a plan. Looking at the plans, you can go through and decide for your own individual needs which one is the best. You can have your free custom domain with these. Uh, you can get their security. You can have unlimited bandwidth and storage. You, like there's a lot of different options. When you get farther down, you start to see uh, this one, you have transaction fees of 3% and you don't have any for 26 or for $40 a month. And so it really just depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking to do some commerce, you're gonna to have to get the more expensive ones. If you're looking for a personal, like if you're just doing a portfolio, just your photos, just go with this one right here. It's gonna be like obviously the cheapest and you can save a little bit if you're getting it annually. Then you also have things like gift cards if you're worried about that or selling subscriptions. You know, So scroll down this, figure out what you need and why you might wanna get that. I'm going to select just a personal one for this right now. Um, and I'm going to type in my credit card and we'll come back after that. 
the next step is to publish this website with a domain. You obviously need the correct domain here. And depending on which of those options you chose, if you chose a more expensive one or if you chose a, an annual subscription, then you might have already had a domain included. I just got the personal one for one month, so it was not included. And the next step is to go down to settings here. And so we're gonna go back through this. So right there, site visibility is private um, because we have to go down and connect a domain. So go to domain, you can say get domain or you can add a domain that you already have. And so I'm not actually gonna pay for this right now because I'm not trying to actually make a canning one, but you can just go and add this. You'll pay like $20 a year for your domain and that's going to be how you get it set up. Now, if you have your own domain, it's a little bit more complicated. If you guys want, I can make another video on that in the future, just comment down below. But essentially, one thing I like to do is go to like Google domains and search for the domains there. So there's different places you can buy domains. It doesn't have to be from uh, right here on Squarespace, but something that I like to do, like I said, Google domains is usually where I go. Now, from here back to settings, you can actually go and you can publish your website. Like I said, you can change your language and religion, business information, or sorry, not language and religion, language and region. <laughs> I read that wrong. Uh, you can change your business information right here. So that's like your contact information. If you want that, you can have a location for a map. Uh, and a lot of this can be, you know, locate, it's easy for people to find when you're open. Um, and you can have that if you can put that information, maybe in the footer, for example, is a good spot to put that. Um, you can have social links there, connected accounts, extensions, permissions, I'm not going to get into any of that stuff. If you want to set up an email, one thing I think everybody should do is go down to G Suite right here and email and you want to set up an email, because I think it's really tacky to be like, Mike's pickle sales, 5769.com or uh, gmail.com. Like, I think that's very tacky. And I think what you probably want to do is say like Mike at santralmedia.com. It's just much more professional. And so obviously the first thing you do is get a domain and then they should walk you through this and it should be fairly easy to have this set up. But that's essentially the last thing I want to show you on here. If we go back to home, you'll see that. So we can have our website published. We can look at this and we can go back and change everything, manage everything. And for the most part, I would say that's pretty much everything you need to know about setting up a website on Squarespace. And I really hope this video helped you guys to better understand what the tools are here, how you can do some different things and the essentials that you need to know to build your first website using Squarespace. Now, this is a very powerful and can be very intimidating tool to use. And I recommend the best thing to do now is just go in and start building and practicing. Your website might not look good at first, but it'll take many hours of working on this and really kind of refining your content, making it look better. And along the way, you will learn a lot of these tools and become much more proficient at making websites with Squarespace. So as always, guys, thank you all for watching. I hope this video helped you. If it did, please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.